This video is actually a really long time in the making. I've been meaning to make a video on command line passwords for some time. I just haven't necessarily known how I wanted to go about it. So, you know, whether or not I wanted to cover argpass or not, I have decided not to cover argpass because click is so superior in my opinion. It's so much easier to use. It's so much more powerful. There's so many more things you can do with it that there wouldn't be a point in doing a video in both. Uh, I don't think so. If you still want me to do a video on Pass, and do let me know in the comments, but for now I'm not going to and I'm just going to use Click, which ironically enough uses Pass's predecessor, OptPass, which is really funny in my opinion. Um, so yeah, before we get started, uh, those of you that have been on the channel for a while may have noticed that things look a little bit different. Let me help explain why that might be. <laughs> Yeah, I'm using a MacBook. It was actually given to me by my work and I'm going to do all of my YouTube recording and editing on it as well. Uh, but I'm not going to do streams on it because I'm, I'm still going to do streams on my old Windows laptop. Um, so uh, yeah, things are going to be on a Mac now. Not that it's going to make much difference in the videos because it's still Visual Studio Code and it's still a Unix shell, but never mind. So to actually use Click, all you need to do once the terminal decides it wants to work, there we go, is to just do pip install click and I've already installed it already so there's nothing to install but it also has no dependencies either which is actually really nice so click is the only thing you're going to be installing if you only install click. It's not going to install like a load of other stuff. So to build our first command we can come over here and do a, a main.py file. It can be called anything but I'm just calling it main.py and we can import click. And to create our first command, what we do is just use the click.command decorator, and then we can pass any function in here, any logic in here. We're just going to do a really simple one for now. And then we need to call that function um, like so. Uh, I did a video already on this name equals main thing, if you haven't, if, you know, if you don't know what that means. But if we now run that, we then get our, this is the, I put, this is the name command, not the main command, but whatever. But we can also, if we do pi uh, main.py double dash help, we can see that our function is already set up to start passing commands. So basically click um, command decorated function is a normal function that you can call in the normal way. It just does all this command line passing on top of that. So it builds a helper command as well. So you can use the help to do this. I, you might be able to make your own, I'm not actually sure. Um, but now we can start adding options and stuff to it. And the first one I'm going to uh, add is the version option one, which is really nice to have. Uh, you do need to have a version already. Um, so say this one, like 0.1.0. If you pass the version in here, and then pass double dash version, you can see that we get a little bit of output. If you don't want all that output, then you can use say message, uh, and then you have to use the old syntax. So that would be that version S, for example, if you just want the version number to show up. Um, so that's how you do versions, you know, very simple. I believe if you're doing a, like a package for PyPy and it has a, a Dunder version in, the, in it, it automatically finds it. I think it does do some things that are smart, but I don't remember off, you know, offhand, um, so I might be wrong about that. Um, but yeah, that'd be worth something, or, or that'd be something worth experimenting if you wanted to. But we are actually going to start doing um, arguments and options and stuff now. So you can do click dot argument, and it is worth noting that in arg pass, everything I believe is an argument, even flags. In click, they are separate decorators. Um, so an argument is just, you know, things you pass to the command. An option is a thing with a hyphen in front of it, like a flag or something like that. Um, and we are going to build, I come back to this example a lot. We are going to build a command that displays a little biography about ourselves or a little profile about ourselves. So if I rename this to profile and then I also rename this to profile as well. Uh, and then we have our argument and then we take our names um, and we're going to set on nargs equals two. So the nargs is the maximum number of arguments. Or actually, I believe this is the number of arguments that would be taken. If you set this to negative one, so if you wanted to support more than just a first and last name, for example, uh, then it would take you know, everything that it can find. So if there is a limit, um, then you know, make that known. I'm not sure if you can set an upper limit. 
like up to three. I don't know if you can do that. I couldn't find anything in the docs to say you could, but if you can and do, let me know. We're going to set it to two though, for the sake of um, for the sake of demonstration, and then we pass names in here. So this name is then gets passed in um, to our uh, function, and then if I just print names, then we can see if I use my actual name, Ethan Henderson. Then we can see that it gets passed through as a tuple um, with you know my first name and my last name as separate arguments. Yeah, as I say, if you have it as negative one, then you can take you know any number of arguments. I believe if I were to just do this, yes, the argument names takes two values, so you couldn't do two. Uh, if you were to do three like that, then it gets an unexpected extra argument because it's not then you know keeping track of all those. So those are arguments. Um, Next, I want to cover options. So these are a little bit more complicated than arguments. Um, so these work similarly to argPass in that you know everything you pass in here as a positional argument, it will take as a potential flag. So if you use dash a or dash age, then it will be able to use both. And then if we pass type equals int, that will convert our input into an integer before it gets passed back out. And then we can also set a default equals zero or you know whatever number you wanted to if you don't want the argument to be or if you want the argument to be optional so we can then pass age in here and then we can print our age as well and i am 24 uh oh it's option not options uh got unexpected oh yeah because we need i completely forgetting how i built my own command there but if you pass the dash a 24, so that was me um, uh, demonstrating that you can't just pass it as an argument, you have to pass it as an option. See, it was intentional, <laughs> did it intentionally. But yeah, as you can see, um, the age is being printed out there. So we can now start kind of building a, a better command here and we're gonna set this to be text. And my name is um, da, 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 do, dot join names and I am age, years old and now if we print that as the text we can see that our command i don't know why it's doing that is able to format a full sentence so i can set this to you know double dash age and it will do the same thing and if i leave it out completely then it will say that i'm zero years old the next thing i want to talk about is boolean flags so there are actually two ways of doing this uh, the first is by using the is flag option. So if I do say dash s, uh, double dash shout, uh, and then pass is flag equals true, this will know um, that it's a boolean and if it's provided, it will set it to true. Uh, so then you pass shout in here, and then we can add an extra check to say if shout text equals text dot upper. So we can put everything in uppercase before we print it out. And if we did that, um, you can see it's all uppercase now, but if we had dash S, then everything's in uppercase. And then we can pass dash S and then dash A 24, and everything's in all uppercase. We can even pass just dash S A, and it will do the same thing. So you can see it has, you know, it has all the, um, the, the argument passing uh, capabilities that you would expect. There is actually a second way to do this. So if I just comment that out, you can also do a click dot option. So say if you had shout and then slash no shout and you don't need to pass it in. If there's a slash in here, it will automatically be able to tell that it's a flag and it will pass it to shout here. Um, so if shout is provided, then shout will be true. If no shout is provided, it'll be false. If it's not provided at all, it will also be false. So we could do the same thing. Oh yeah, I don't have short anymore, do we? Or the dash S anymore, sorry. So if I did shout, it would do that. If I did no shout, it would leave it all lowercase. And then if we got rid of it, it would also leave it all lowercase. Um, so if you wanted, I forget the official name for them, but if you wanted a flag that you could explicitly say no with, and that's how you do it in click. The final thing I want to talk about in this video is files and stuff, because this is actually, um, it doesn't work necessarily as you'd expect. Click has its own thing 
uh, to handle files. So I thought I might as well show it off because I actually learned about it while looking at the documentation last night planning this video. Um, and it would have been good to know otherwise. So we're going to create a new option and we're going to have F file. And this is going to be type equals click dot file W. Um, so to, to open it in write mode. And essentially uh, click will pass, you know, this file object through and it intelligently um, performs file manipulation for you. So we could say, you know, if file, uh, then we can print uh, saving to, whoops, file on name is the name of the, the, you know, the file you're saving it to. And then file.write text to actually write the text in. So if we then pass dash F, say, you know, profile.txt, then we can see that it's saving to profile.txt, and then we have our profile.txt here, and it has the body of our text in it. My name is Ethan Henderson, I'm 24 years old. If I were to do this, say, with the shout, then it would write the, uh, the shouting version in the file. So before I go, there is one more quick thing I wanna show you. I am actually gonna create a new file for this because I think it'll be a little bit easier, but I want to show you how to do sub commands. So we can import click again. And if we have say if name equals main, and then we can um, you know, call our soon to exist CMD function. So to have a group function, all you need to do is just do click dot group instead. And then we can pass CMD. And then we can pass, do this is a group command. And if you wanted to have a sub command, you would use at cmd.command. And this way is good because you can actually import cmd into a different file, and then you can you know, use that group in that file. So you can actually split out groups into multiple files, which is really nice. And if you have sub command here, we can print this is a sub command like so. So if you run this now, you can see that it invokes the help by default. It doesn't actually run the command. If you don't want that to be the case, we can pass invoke uh, without command equals true. And now we can run the command as a normal command. Um, you can see in the help command, we have commands sub command. So if you run it uh, with a sub command, it runs the group command and the sub command um, at the same time. Now you may want this to happen, you may not. If you don't want this to happen, what you can do is you can pass click.pass context. You then have your CTX in here. And you can say if not ctx.invoked sub command, then print that. So now if you run this, it just says this is a group command. And if you run this, it just says this is a sub command. It still runs the group command, but because you know all our logic is inside the if not block here. Or you could, if you had more um, complex logic, you could have if ctx dot sub, um, invoke sub command and then return. That's actually probably the more pathonic way to do it. And then move this over here <clears throat> like that. So now only uh, the logic will be run, or the logic will only be run if there was no sub command uh, to it, which is really cool. And you can be free. You can run certain parts of the command uh, and not run others if you have. You know, different sub commands and all this, that, and the other. So that is the bare bones basis of click. As I said at the start of the video, there's a lot more you can do. However, obviously, I don't want these videos to be hours and hours long. If you like the video, then make sure to leave a like and to let me know, and maybe subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you have any questions or any you know ideas of videos that you want to see in the future, make sure to leave a comment below. I read all of them, so your feedback would be greatly appreciated. If you want to support this channel monetarily, you can do so in one of two ways. The first of which by becoming a member using the join button. The second of which by becoming a patron using the link in the description. One pound a month and either and you can be on this screen like these people. And I will see you in the next video. Um, where it will probably be um, a browser-based video, not going to be programming at all, which is interesting. I'm not going to spoil too much, but we'll be looking at an exciting new browser, uh, hopefully, in the next video. So I will see you for that.